Okay, here are the really simple steps that you want to follow for the whole fat loss protocol. It's just a few steps, five steps exactly, and number one is measure. So you're going to measure a few different ways. First, you're going to start learning how to use MyFitnessPal online to count your calories. You want to count the number of calories you're eating every day. You want to add them up at the end of the week, and you want to see if you gained, stayed the same, or lost weight. Second thing you're going to measure is how many grams of protein you're eating every single day. Just start looking at those two numbers. That's going to cover measure. Next thing right off the bat, and do this in your written food journal, is you're going to measure yourself with a tape. So a tape measure around your waist, around the belly button. Keep the tape tight, but not too tight. Don't cinch it. Around the belly button, and keep it parallel with the floor when you measure. Keep the measurements exact so you get a consistent measurement every time. Then you're going to measure your hips around the part of your butt that sticks out the most. And again, keep the tape lateral or parallel to the floor so you get an accurate measurement. And then the last measurement is going to be the thigh. Measure both the left and the right thigh because they're going to be a little bit different. And you're going to measure that around the largest part of the thigh. Again, keep the tape straight. Keep it tight to the skin, but don't cinch the skin. Take those three measurements, write them down. Next measurement you want to take right off the bat after the tape measurements is weigh yourself. Now you need to do this in the morning on an empty stomach. Right when you wake up, after you go to the bathroom, no clothes on, no water, and no food in your stomach. This is going to give you the most accurate weight. This is going to be the only way you weigh yourself from this time forward because otherwise you're going to get an inaccurate weight measurement. My fitness pal has a little bit of a learning curve, so you just got to learn how to use that thing. Get the free app on your phone. You can use it on your phone. There's a bar barcode scanner that you use to scan barcodes on foods, input information. And then sometimes you're going to have to guesstimate on the portion size, but guesstimate as accurately as you possibly can. Put in the portions, enter in your food, uh, become my friend on MyFitnessPal. Just look up Brian Debates on MyFitnessPal. And then uh, there's a setting you can change so I can actually view your diary. If you go on MyFitnessPal, if you find me as a friend, I can look at your food diary and I can help you analyze the food that you're eating. On MyFitnessPal, don't worry about hitting a certain number yet. Just worry about starting to track the number of calories and the amount of protein that you eat every single day. Is keeping an online food journal. Now you also have the option of keeping a written food journal. If you keep a written food journal, do it like this. Get a daily calendar book that gives you a big page for each day of the week. And on the left hand side of the book, you're going to write the meals you plan on eating and you're going to plan a few days in advance. We're going to cover that here. And on the right side, you're going to write down what you actually ate. And you do want to include portion sizes in that as well. And you can look at that and you can go back and figure out the calories. I'll show you how to do that. So you're either going to use MyFitnessPal online or on your phone with the free app, or you're going to keep a written journal and you're going to plan on the left-hand side of the written journal and then you write what actually happened on the right-hand side. If you're a woman, I'm going to give you a general number to start with, but we may even need to change that number around. If you're a woman, you're going to shoot for around 100 grams of protein a day. If you get more, that's totally okay, but try not to get less than that. Try to shoot for around 100 grams of protein a day. More is okay. Calories, I'm not going to give you a specific number of calories because that's going to vary depending on the person. Here's how you're going to know how many calories you need to eat every day to lose body fat. Look at your average daily that you've actually done over the past week and see if you lost weight or if you didn't. Okay, if you're losing more than three pounds a week, that sounds like a good thing, but it's actually not because your body's going to plateau at some point. So if you're losing more than three pounds a week, you want to actually increase your daily average by 100 calories. And that's it. Daily average increase by 100, that's going to be your calorie number. If you're losing one to two pounds a week, you want to keep your daily average calories the same and then still focus on increasing that protein number if it's not 100 a day. If you're gaining weight, by God, hopefully that doesn't happen. If you're gaining weight, you need to look at your average daily calories and reduce it by 100 calories per day. Do that for another week. See what your weight does. Okay, don't make any drastic changes. If you're gaining weight, just drop down 100 calories per day and start to clean up your quality of food. All right, all that stuff was step one. Make sure you go back and take notes. Step two, you're going to plan out your meals. So keep a written journal, daily calendar. On the left side of the daily calendar, over the next three to seven days, as many as you can, but do at least three days, plan out what your meals are going to be. Plan breakfast, plan lunch, and plan dinner. And here's how you get ideas to plan those meals if you don't already have ideas. Go to YouTube.com, and in the search box, search Simple High Protein Breakfast. 
Look for some videos on there. Watch the videos to get the ideas. Next thing, simple high-protein lunch. Get some ideas, write them down. Next thing, simple high-protein dinners. Write these things down. Plan out your breakfast, lunch, and dinner over the next at least three days, but max seven days if you can. Okay, now you've planned your meals. Now make a shopping list based on the food that you need to make the meals. Pretty simple stuff. Make the shopping list. And this is the next step here, step number three. Shop, and then immediately come home, chop, prep, cook, and portion. Shop, chop, prep, cook, portion. You want to chop right after you shop because you want to immediately come home and start putting this food together. The sooner you do it, and the sooner you prepare, cut, cook your food, put it in containers, one meal per container. Get bigger containers if you need bigger meals. But three containers a day is all you're going to need. Three full-size meals in three different containers. Put them in the fridge. Now all your food is prepared. Now the next step is really easy. The next step is going to be eat and repeat. So once you have all the containers in the fridge, you go and you eat the food. Make sure, remember, you write it down on the written journal. So write down on the right side of that written journal what you actually ate compared to what you plan to eat. Start doing this as a regular practice. Left side of the page, plan the meals. Right side, what you actually ate. And input this information in MyFitnessPal to help you count the calories. Now you're going to look at your weekly calories and your daily protein number. One last thing, keep up with the measurements. Okay, You're going to know every week your weekly calorie number. And then you're going to average that out and get your average daily calorie number. Then you're going to look at your protein number every day. And you're going to figure out your average daily protein number. How many grams of protein are you eating every day? Now every week, you're going to rotate which measurement you do. So on the second week, you're going to remeasure yourself and do tape measurements. Now you're going to compare those to the first week. Don't look for any big drastic change in the first week. Just get the numbers down. So get accurate information. This is real data. This is a scientific, reasonable approach. Next week after that, you're going to weigh yourself. Next week after that, tape measure. Next week after that, weigh yourself.